Time will not permit us to discuss the various similarities. We'll just discuss a few other similarities which are not known by the common Muslims and the Hindus that exist in both the religions. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90, Allah says, Ya ayyuh allazina amunu, O you believe, innam al khamru wal maisuru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling, wal anzabu wal azamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rishtum minam ali shaitan, these are Satan's handiwork, first and ibulla lukum tuflihun, abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. Here Allah is telling us, that intoxicants, gambling, fortune telling, idol worship, these are Satan's handiwork. Abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. These messages are also repeated in the Hindu scriptures. If you read Manu Smriti, chapter number 9, verse number 235, it prohibits the drinking of alcohol. It says that a priest killer, a liquor drinker, a thief, a violator of his guru's marriage bed, all these four people and individually they commit major sins. And few verses later, Manusmiti chapter number 9, verse number 238 gives the punishment for these people. It says that these miserable men, no one should eat with them, no one should sacrifice for them, no one should read to them, no one should marry them. They should wander throughout the earth, excommunicated from all the religions. The punishment for having alcohol in Hinduism is that no one should eat with him, no one should read to him, no one should sacrifice for him, no one should marry him. He should be excommunicated from all the religions and wander throughout the earth. Even this punishment is not mentioned in Islam for a liquor drinker. Next, it further says in Manusmiti, chapter number 11. Verse number 55, it says that a drinker, a priest killer, a person who steals, a person who violates his guru's marriage bed, all these people and all those who associate with him, they commit major sin. Means not only if you drink, if you associate with the drunkard, according to Manusmiti chapter number 11, verse number 55, you are doing a major sin. Manusmiti chapter number 11, verse number 94 says, that liquor has been derived from the dirt, from the excreta of rice, and dirt is evil. So a priest, nor a ruler, nor a commoner should drink liquor. There are various places in the Hindu scripture where liquor has been prohibited, including Manusmiti, chapter number 9, verse number 225, Manusmiti, chapter number 7, verse 47, Manusmiti, chapter number 7, verse number 50, Rigved, book number 8, hymn number 2, verse number 12, Rigved, book number 8, hymn number 21, verse number 14. In several places, alcohol, liquor has been prohibited in the Hindu scriptures. Now, second point, Mentioned for reminder, chapter number 5, verse number 90 was, Ya ayyuhal lazina amunu, ennam al khamru al maisuru, more certain toxins and gambling. Hindu scriptures even prohibit gambling. If you read Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 34, verse number 3, it says a gamester, a gambler, he says that his wife leaves him aloof. His mother hates him. And he says that no one comforts this wretched man. And after a few verses, Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 34, verse number 13, it says that do not play with dice. Rather, cultivate the land and whatever you earn, be satisfied with that earning. Gambling has also been prohibited in Manusmiti, chapter number 7, verse number 50. It says, drinking, gambling, women and hunting. All these are four major sins in order. Drinking alcohol has also been prohibited in Manusmiti, chapter number 7, verse number 47. In Manusmiti, chapter number 9, verse number 221 to 228. It's also prohibited in Manusmiti, chapter number 9, verse number 258. The third thing, well, Anzabu al Azamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, idol worship, we already discussed earlier. Divination of arrows, fortune telling. It's mentioned in Manusmiti, chapter number 9, verse number 258. 
that a person who earns his living by telling good things, a soothsayer and a fortune teller, Manuswil chapter 9 verse 262 says that the king shall punish them according to the severity of the crime. So even fortune telling and soothsaying have been prohibited in Manuswil chapter number 9 verse number 258 to 262. Quran further says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 88. Quran prohibits bribing. Quran says, Use not your wealth as a bait for the judges, in order you may eat other people's wealth. Quran prohibits involving in bribe. The same thing is mentioned in Manusmriti, chapter number 9, verse number 258. It says that a person who deals with bribe, a deceiver, a defaulter. All of them, verse 262 says that the king shall punish them according to the severity of the sin. Furthermore, Quran prohibits the eating of pork in no less than four different places. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 173, Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 3, Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 145, and Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 115, Hurramat alaykumul maitutu waddamu wa rahmul khanzeer, wa ma ahulla li gairin labi, forbidden for you for food, ah, dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah's name is invoked. Quran prohibits, besides other things, the eating of the flesh of swine, pork has been prohibited. Pork has also been prohibited in the Hindu scriptures. It's mentioned in the Manusmriti, chapter number 5, verse number 19. It says that a Brahmin, knowingly, if he eats mushroom, if he eats dung he pig, if he eats onion, a tame cock, or garlic, he shall fall. It's further mentioned in the Vishnu Sutra, chapter number 5, Verse number 49, that anyone who sells pork should be punished in the same way. Anyone who sells the forbidden meat, including pork, he should be punished in the same way. That means his opposite hands and legs should be lopped off. The Vishnu Sutra, chapter number 5, verse number 49 says, if anyone sells pork, the punishment for him is chopping off his opposite hands and feet. Even this punishment is not mentioned in the Quran. So, the Hindu scriptures are more against not having the flesh of pork as compared to Islamic scriptures. There are many misconceptions in Islam and people always point a finger that why does Islam subjugate the women by keeping her in the veil? And if we analyze that who is to decide what is modest? The Quran says in Surah Nur, Chapter number 24, verse number 30. Say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. That whenever a man looks at a woman, any brazen thought comes in his mind, he should lower his gaze. Next verse, Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31 says, Say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty. And display not her beauty except what appears ordinary of. And draw her veil over the bosom. And display not her beauty except in front of her father, her husband, her son, and a big list of mehram is given. Basically, there are six criteria for hijab which is given in the Quran and the Hadith. The first is the extent. For the man, it's from navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and hands up to the wrist. There are many scholars who say that when they should be covered. The remaining five criteria are the same. The second is the clothes they wear, it should not be tight so that it reveals the figure. Third, it should not be transparent. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not resemble and be a sign of the unbeliever. And sixth, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. Similarly, if you read Hindu scriptures, it's mentioned in Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 33, verse number 19. It says, Brahma has made you a dame, made you a lady. So therefore, cast down your eyes and do not look up. Put your feet together and let not your garment reveal what your veil conceals. So according to Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 33, verse number 19, it says that the woman should lower the gaze. They should not stare at the opposite sex and they should wear a veil. 